large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Mr. Dillon, like you said. Oh, good, Chester. They was the sorriest looking cowboys I ever did see. <laughs> I guess I didn't really hurt any of them, Chester. Well, sure, being banged on the head with a six gun ain't the gentlest way to end the evening's pleasure. <laughs> yeah, they'll live. Yeah, they've been taking their pleasure too seriously. Yes, sir, but things quieted down a little last night after you locked up them five. There might have been real trouble otherwise. My, I just don't know what's got into everybody lately, Mr. Dillon. Well, it goes like that, Chester. Things will be peaceful enough for a while till some wild outfit like this drag our herd hits down. Then you gotta come down on them hard and fast before they really get the bit in their teeth. <laughs> you sure did last night. <laughs> well, it isn't over yet. You, Marshal Dillon? Yeah. I am. My name's Rance. Well, I'm glad to know you, Rance. I bossed the drag our herd up here from down around Matagorda. That's in Texas, Marshal. Yeah, I've been there. You have? Well, you better not go back. Oh. We might give you the kind of welcome you're giving us. What's your complaint, Rance? Buffalo and my men. Five of them come into camp this morning with blood in their hair. They said you'd done it. Yeah, yeah, I did. And if I hadn't, they might have been shot. Or shot somebody else. Yeah, it's a good thing for you. You took them on one at a time. I'd have taken them anyway. Look, Rance, this town was on the edge of a riot last night. I stopped it. And I stopped it without any killing. It's a man's own business. He wants to pull out his gun. Uh-uh. Not around here, it isn't. Marshal, I can't ask men to come up the trail the way they do and take to drinking soda water and talking in whispers. What kind of a town is this, anyway? It's a good town. Now, you and your men can drink and gamble all they want in it. But they can't shoot the mirror off the wall at the Alafraganza, and they can't grab town women on the street. They can't break the bartender's arm in the Oasis, and they can't offer to shoot anyone that tries to stop them. It isn't that kind of a town. Well, sure. They get a little frisky, but there's no harm in it, I can see. Now, sooner or later, it'll lead to killing. You know, i got to draw the line somewhere. So do I, Marshal. Well, huh? what do you mean? I mean I won't drive cattle to Dodge no more. Now I'll spread the words of no good town. And you people can live off sodbusters and buffalo hunters. This place will starve to death. I'm hired to keep the peace, Rance. Any way I can. Keep it, then. We won't bother Dodge no more. Goodbye, Marshal. You want me to go in with you, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no. No, Chester. You, you better wait outside. Okay, sir. What do you think they're up to, anyway? Well, Green told you it was a businessmen's meeting, didn't he? Yes, sir. And I expect they're worried about business. Ah, here we are. I'll, uh, I'll be out shortly. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Marshal. Mr. Green. Hello, Marshal. Gentlemen. Hello, Marshal. Well, Mr. Green, you asked me to come here. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, uh, we all did, Marshal. Uh, uh, Mr. Pepper and Mr. Howe and, and uh, well, all of us. Uh, practically every man who does business in Dodge is here. Uh-huh. I don't see Rance. He says he does business here, too. He sure does. That's what we want to talk about. Well, go ahead. <clears throat> Well, uh, we've had a meeting, Marshal, and, uh, we've decided you got to go easier on these cowboys. Uh Uh-huh. Why, gentlemen? We can't afford to lose all that business. That's why. That's right. There's always some trouble the first day or so after a herd reaches Dodge. All I do is buffalo a few of the wildest, and gradually the rest of the cowboys calm down a little bit. But they won't stand for your slugging men and and, and throwing them in jail. Nobody got killed last night, did they? But that isn't the the point. Well, according to the law, it's a pretty good point, Mr. Green. The law is a fine thing, Marshal. But we're also interested in business. That's right. You're scared. Because one hard-headed trail boss has threatened you, Hal. They're not all like rants, you know. Well, there, there, there's no use to argue, Marshal. We, we got our minds made up. You're just too rough with those men. Uh huh. Tell me something, Mister Green. Would you like to run this town? Why, why, no, no, of course not. No, not me. But, uh, well, we thought maybe if you'd kind of. Leave Dodge alone and do your work in the country. Then we'd hire somebody the cowboys here would take to a little better. Hey, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. It's a good thing for me I'm employed by the government, isn't it? No, no, Marshal. We're just making a suggestion, sort of. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. You know what, Mr. Green? You men are all acting like fools. You're the one. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But there's only one way you're going to learn. Well, gentlemen, I won't make any more arrests and dodge until you come and ask me to. It's your town, and you can blow it right off the map if you want to. Good day. I got mail, Mr. Dillon. What there was. Well, I'll look at it later, Chester. We're going to have a lot of time. Yes, sir. But you just wait till the word gets out. The Dodge is wide open. There's going to be nothing but trouble. Yeah, maybe. But this is the only way I can handle it. They won't listen to me otherwise. Uh, excuse me, Marshal. Well, well, what for? Well, I, I don't want to bother you none, but I thought I'd better come and see you. Well, you're not bothering me. I sure hope not. Well, what can I do for you? Mar- Marshal, you don't know me, but I've heard about you. And... Yeah, it seems like a lot of people have lately. Uh, I know. M- Mar- Marshal, I... Well, go ahead, mister. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> uh, I'm the new constable. What? The The new constable. They picked me. I, I had to take it, Marshal. I'm so broken all. <laughs> you sound like you're apologizing. Well, I guess I am. Well, I didn't want you to be mad at me. I, I, I needed the money, and that's why I'm doing it. That's all right. Somebody had to take the job. I yeah. just didn't know they were going to call it constable. Well, they want it to sound as peaceful as possible, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, what's your name, mister? Willard. Willard? Yes, sir. Willard Bann. Yeah. Well, where are you from, Willard? Well, sir, I used to be a cowboy, but then I got so fat and all. I just sort of work around wherever I can. I, <clears throat> I've been awful broke. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yes, sir. How come you're not wearing a gun? Well, shucks, Marshal, I don't never wear no gun. I, I don't even know how to use one very good. Well, then you're a whole lot better off without one. 
I don't aim to get in any fights, Marshal. If there's any trouble, maybe I can just sort of uh, talk him out of it. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Well, Willard, I uh, wish you a lot of luck. Well, thanks. I, I got to be going now, Marshal. I'm on pay already. So long. Um, uh, so long, Marshal. Uh, so long, mister. Uh, so long. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I agree, Chester. They will ruin that poor fellow if he tries to stop him. Uh, he won't even raise his voice against him. That they sure might ruin Dodge. <laughs> Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, show a profit on your patriotism. Buy United States savings bonds. Buy them regularly at your bank or where you work through the payroll savings plan. If you're looking for an investment, what better investment can you make than one that makes your country secure? U.S. savings bonds help Uncle Sam foot the bill for defense, cut into inflationary trends, make purchasers equal partners with the government in running the country. Why United States savings bonds, paying 3% interest when held to maturity, and show a profit on your patriotism. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. government paid for my office and the jail behind it, so I stayed there. I was sure that Constable Willard Band, broke and fat and humble, wasn't going to manhandle any randy Texas cowboys and throw them behind bars. And the first 24 hours passed peacefully enough. The drag our outfit was busy moving their herd across the Arkansas and didn't get into town. But the next day, a new herd arrived, and that night it seemed like all the Texas had come to Dodge. By midnight, no man, unless he was armed and ready to fight, should have been on the street. It was Doc who told us what it was like when he came into the office where Chester and I were sitting it out playing a little two-handed 21. Oh, it's a fine thing when the U.S. Marshal holds up in his office when men are getting shot up and knived all over town. Well, I hope that's not true, Doc. It is true. I just come back from trying to save the second victim. The first one's already dead. Cowboys or citizens? Cowboys. They'd have been citizens, I suppose. Those dundee heads would have been in here on their knees begging you for help. I don't want them on their knees. Oh, I know, Matt, but it's getting worse. Why, that last fellow, they wouldn't even let me bring him back to my office. They said he might as well die right there on the floor of the Texas Trail. They did? They sure did. And they ran me right out of there. They what? They took me by the arms and they half carried me as far as the door. Oh, yes, but I called him everything I could think of while they were doing it. You think that man's dead yet, Doc? He will be soon. If I don't get into where I can work on him. All right, we're going over there and get him. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. I told him I wouldn't make any arrests, and I won't. But nobody's going to stand between Doc and a wounded man. You get in the middle, Doc. Yeah, I wish there was a tunnel under the street. I don't see where it is. He ought to be out here talking his head off, if that's his plan. He's lucky if he doesn't get hung tonight. Watch your gun, Chester. Don't let anybody grab it. No, sir, I'm carrying my hand on it, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> He's right over there, Matt. He's flying in front of the bar. All right. All right, get up. Come on, make room here. All right, go ahead, Doc. See if he's still alive. All right. Let me, let me look at him here. He, oh. oh, he doesn't look very good. I thought you'd quit, Marshal. I haven't quit, Rance. What are you doing here, then? A man's dying. It was a fair fight. We believe in dying where we fall, Marshal. We don't need no help. I won't even argue with you, Rance, but the first man that interferes with Doc's going to die on his feet. And if you can't understand it any other way, just put it to Doc's a friend of mine. Is that clear enough for you? Now, now, 
Now, men, let's don't have no trouble in here. Let's talk it over and settle this thing peacefully. Yeah. Oh, it's you, huh, Marshal? Hello, Willard. Well, I'm having a terrible time, Marshal. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Matt. How is he, Doc? Uh, he's bad. But I just might save him. Okay, Doc. Willard. Uh, yes, sir. Help Chester carry the man over to Doc's office. Huh? Sure, Marshal, sure. Leave him be, Constable. That's enough, Rance. Let him die in peace, I say. Rance, I'd throw you in jail, but I said I wouldn't make any arrests. Then why don't you get out of here while you still can? Now get up! All right! I will shoot the first man that touches a gun. All right, Chester Willard, get moving. Yes, sir, we got him. Uh, come on, Willard. You lead the way, Doc. That's just how I got him. Let's hurry. That man won't live long if we don't. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and the crowd's thicker than ever, Mr. Dillon. Come over here and take a look. Another hour and they'll really be out of hand. Yep. Hey, look yonder, Mr. Dillon. There's Miss Kitty coming across the street. What? Huh? Wait here, Chester. What are you doing out here, Kitty? I was coming to find you. Let's get off the street. Come on. Oh, shoo. It's getting worse. Oh, Chester. Hello, Miss Kitty. You shouldn't have gone out in the street, Kitty. Oh, it's no worse than the Texas Trail. Then you ought to go home. I am. I'm all through till somebody put the lid on this town. That ranch is over there right now, Matt, getting drunk and calling for blood. There's been enough blood around here already. Uh, how is he, the one you got out of there? Well, Doc was down a while ago. Said he took the bullet out and he thinks he has a chance now. Oh, good. You say Rance is working up trouble? Yeah, he's trying. I guess he didn't take to your bashing him on the head. Well, it quieted things down for a little while, anyway. They sure got that poor constable treed, Willard, what's his name? Mm, he's a nice fella. I hope they don't hurt him none. When I left, they had him dancing on the bar. He looked about to cry. Well, that's harder on the bar and tis on Willard. He's about the one fattest peace officer I ever did see. He's gonna be fatter than ever after tonight. Every time he opens his mouth to talk, somebody pours a glass of beer down him. Oh. It's sort of pitiful, Matt. Yeah, it's worse than that, Kitty. I know. That's why I got out of there. You can kind of feel when a crowd like that starts to get real mean. Mm, Grace, just listen to him out there. I'm not even staying in town tonight. I'm going out to Moss Snyder's. That's a good idea, Kitty. Uh, Chester, you go along with her, huh? All right, sir. I better stick around. All right, well, well, it's Mr. Green and Mr. Pepper and... Look at Willie. Uh, fella beat me up. He beat me up bad. He certainly did. And, and Marshal... We come here to ask you... Wait a minute, Mr. Green. Chester, take Willard up to Doc, oh, son. Yes, sir, I sure will. Come on, Willie. Oh, thank you. And then come back here for Kitty. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Green. You wanted to ask me something. you got to stop, Marshal. Another man's been killed. Mr. Howe's brother. He caught a stray bullet out back of the Longhorn. I'm sorry to hear that. I wondered why Mr. Howe wasn't here. Well, he told me to tell you that he'll trust your judgment from now on. Uh, we shouldn't have interfered, Marshal. But we're all behind you now, ain't we, gentlemen? You'll you, you do something, won't you, Marshal? All right. It's pretty late, but I'll try. And I'll start with Rance. He's the worst of the lot. I'll go get him and throw him in jail. But before I go, I want every saloon keeper in Dodge to put out his lights and close up. Now, you gentlemen will have to pass the word for that. I don't want to be seen till I go for a rant. Oh, we'll do it, Marshal. We'll do it right now. Yeah. All right, then get going before it's too late. I waited for half an hour while Green and the others spread the word to close up the saloons. The lights gradually went out, up and down the street. And I left the office, alone. I found Rance in front of the Texas Trail, and I was able to reach him before I was recognized. Uh, 
Marshal's bad. Let's shoot him, man. You better get out of here, Marshal. We ain't in no mood to fool. Neither am I. The street's closed, Rance. Now go on back to your camp. We ain't going nowhere. It'll open up again tomorrow night. And you're welcome to come back then. There won't be no town by tomorrow. Yeah. Let's set it afire, man. Rance, shut up. I won't shut up. You're going to jail. I'm what? Leave him be, my... You want to fight, mister? Rance here's too drunk. He wouldn't have a chance, but you might. He's right, Pete. I'd never make it. You draw on him. Go on, shoot him. Well, I'm waiting, cowboy. I ain't no gunfighter. Go on, you coward. No. Why should I die? This ain't my business anyway. Somebody do it, then. I'll fight any man here. And I'll fight him fair. Not me. No, I don't mean me. Then I'll have to try it myself. Don't do it, Ranch. He'll kill you. Get out of my way. No, you don't. No, no. Give me that gun, Pete. I'll keep your gun. Give me it. Cut it out, Ranch, or I'll slug you. Now, that was smart of you, mister. But he's still going to jail. You got a lot of nerve, Marshal, bucking a crowd like this. I'm not bucking a crowd. I'm one man against any other one man here. You cowboys aren't built that way. I've been in Texas, too, mister. Mm -hmm. Guess you win, Marshal. Yeah, it looks that way. All right. Now, do you want to take Rance to jail, or do you want me to do it? Well... His head might be less lumpy tomorrow if I do it, Marshal. Start walking, Rance. Gunsmoke. Transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, John Daner, Joseph Kearns, Fred Mackay, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. <laughs> night hear Van Heflin as one of America's most notorious criminals in a thrilling fact drama titled The Last Days of John Dillinger. Radio's outstanding theater of thrills, suspense, traces Dillinger's last daring escape, his desperate last resort of plastic surgery to change his appearance, and finally, his involvement with two women who brought him trouble and disaster. Hear it all on CBS Radio's Suspense, Monday night on most of these same stations. George Walsh speaking. You ride a real squad car with Night Watch, Mondays on the CBS Radio Network.